Today we'll be predicting the thermal performance of an assembly from an electrical load. We'll begin by creating our simulation files in the SimCenter 3D Advanced Thermal Environment. We'll also make sure that we'll select the Joule data in our results options. Next we'll create a mesh on our components in our assembly. Then we'll assign a material. These components are made out of copper, however the copper material in the library doesn't have the electrical properties in it. So we'll need to make a copy of it and add those properties. So here we'll select all properties after we've copied it. You can see we have all of our thermal properties that we need. However, the electromagnetic properties need a resistivity. I have a table of values for resistivity. It's in a text file and here you can see temperature versus electrical resistivity. However, the temperature units are incorrect. They should be in degrees C as well as our resistivity should be in ohms millimeters, so we'll change the units for those columns. Alright, so now that we've modified that property, we'll go ahead and assign it to our collector. Next we'll define our electrical loads and boundary conditions. First one will be convection to environment. And here we'll put in a convection coefficient of 10 watts per meter squared degrees C. And we'll put that on all of the faces of all of our components. All right, next we'll define our Joule data. And there are a number of things that we need to define. The first thing is our ground. We'll define that with zero volts on one particular location where our ground is. All right, next we need to define our power source on the other side of our assembly. And here we're going to define a current load of 50 amps on this face. Now currently there's no way for electricity to flow because we don't have a congruent mesh across all of those components. So to allow current to flow we need to make some electrical couplings. So this is done by defining primary and secondary regions that are coupled together. So here's our primary region and then our secondary region is here. Then we can define an electrical resistance for that coupling and that completes the specification. Now we have another electrical coupling we need to make in one other location. And here again we'll specify the primary and secondary regions. And the electrical resistance. All right, we not only need to specify electrical couplings, but also thermal couplings. So in the same fashion, we'll define our primary and secondary regions and a heat transfer coefficient. All 
and we'll do that in the same locations as our electrical couplings. All right, now we're ready to solve. This only takes a few seconds to run, and we can view our results. So first we can take a look at the temperature of the various components, but in addition, the Joule data will give us the voltage power density, and current density results as well. So we just defined a circuit based on a load coming from a current. Next, we'll define a load coming from a voltage drop. So to do that, we'll go ahead and clone our existing solution and remove our 50 amp load and put in, instead, a uh, voltage drop. So here we'll specify a voltage drop of a hundredth of a volt. And we'll put it on the same face where our current was applied. And now we're ready to run. and view our results for our voltage drop. Joule Heating helps you predict the thermal performance of your electrical products.